Uh, good morning, everybody. It is the 6th of March. Breakfast with the Master. Hope you guys have all had a good week. Happy Thursday, yeah. Hey, Rebecca, how are you? Hey, BG. Pat, what's going on? Hey, that's Gary C. in a couple hours. Everybody good? Cold, huh? Hmm. Well, sorry about that. All right. Um, we are going to continue this morning. Um, to look at a trade that, you know, you, as I said, you've seen the song and dance. Bring your winter jacket next week. Yeah. Well, I have a full set of winter clothes there. Don't worry. Oh, oh, beautiful. 10 degrees in a row. Yahoo. I'm just worried about the snow. Anyway. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's take a trade apart and see, and I, see if I can break into the logic. Um, of a trade, and this is going to be a, a Canadian, a Canadian trade. I don't know. Two weeks ago, we, we looked at it. I, I, time flies. I don't really know. I'm, I'm packing. I don't really know where, what day it is. So, so as I start to look at this before the weekend, there's just nothing going on but you know I have a I have a parcel of about five things that I watch on a regular basis and I do rotate things in and out of it but there are really no more than five for shorter shorter term trains shorter term for me is you know might be a week Might be a touch more, but not much more than that. Anything other than that is portfolio trading. Sometimes the fund is involved. Sometimes the fund is not involved. Depends on the liquidity and what I'm doing. So I'm watching Canada. And you can see it, it's just doing nothing. It's fishtailing. Looks like a lot, but we've got a range of basically 82 down to 40 so we got a 42 pip range maybe even a 40 pip range just not much we leave a high and do not follow through start to head lower you know even even when I'm just trying to get a feel for a market the easiest way to do it is to just box in the highs and lows and watch them get broken or watch them hold okay then we get this nice little head stander here put out the advanced multi-pivot line and you can see significant low the bar when it prints makes you wonder put out the advanced multi-pivot line and look at price run away from it so you know it's a significant low, so go ahead and mark it. Now it might just be a low of this range, and here's your box. But this is the simplest way for you guys to follow structure. And those of you, I've seen you know, lots of charts in the last two months. I don't see much boxing going on. I don't do it to be pretty I do it because you know I go from chart to chart when I come back I go okay well there's here's the structure we're working with I know right where I'm at so I leave messages to myself on the chart there's a reason for it and believe me if I do it it's probably good enough for you guys but I don't see it enough 
instead what I still see far too much raise your hand if you're guilty lots of data way too much data look let's be honest you can't what what's the famous saying if God wanted you to do something half-assed he would have given you one cheek at some point you're gonna to have to be in or be out okay and I already told you at the beginning of the week you know we're going from you know as I tell my my Stanford group exactly where they are what kind what what level these are graduate students what what level class is this? Hey, if you think you're in physics 101, I'm sorry, you're in physics 107. Okay, 101 is down the door, down the hallway over there. If you're at 107, you better be performing at 107. Okay. Well, I would, I, I BG and Pat, I know you guys have, and I know these sessions helped you. You don't need three times as much bars as this. You just don't. All it's going to—it's like going to multiple time frames. All it's going to do is confuse you. Okay. So, either buy in or sit here and don't. You're never going to get it. Okay. I—I I, I don't want to be mean. But if you're not willing to buy in, you're never going to get it. Price carries information forward. I have no idea what that means, Abdu. Do you mean you don't have to look back because everything's in price? Okay, that's fine. I, I'm just making sure I understand what you're saying. Um, that's another part about doing uh, what I would consider advanced work. This is not the midday session, okay? One second. Is that you need, and I know for some of you, And I mean this in the nicest way. Your English is not the best, but neither is mine. But try your best to be precise when you make a comment, unless it's a just a joking comment, okay? Isn't the most important event what is unfolding? Well, I'll ask you, John. Isn't the most important event what's unfolding? If we're coming up to significant highs, and they are significant, won't price show you that they're significant by the way that it acts? Well, no, as long as you pay attention to price action. How about that? That's a more precise way of saying it, John. Saying you look for it, leads others, and I know you don't mean this, leads others to believe that you should be looking back in time to find out if you're coming up to an important area, and that's not what you mean. So you need to watch price action and say, hmm, the way price is reacting, look, the way price is reacting makes a new low, closes on its high, makes a high, so it follows through, make, closes on its high, closes near its high. It's reacting. Pay attention. Now we're testing the top of our box. And look at the bars. Head stander, head stander, upper third, head stander. So we'll see which side of the box. That doesn't mean the top's not going to hold. But that's the first thing you got to ask yourself: Was will the top hold, or will I get range extension? I got a little bit of range extension down here, about five pips. 
what am I going to get up here? All right. When we break through the top of this range, I'm, I was already pretty sure this was significant by the action, but this makes it significant. Do you see that? Inside buyer, but a higher close and a higher close. Okay, we're testing the top of the range. Testing the top of the range, but close higher. Testing the top of the range. Just flirting. Ah, here we go. New high close, new high. Testing the top of the range. Testing the top of the range and in the range. Come down, leave double bottoms, close on our high, start to move back higher. The moment you see the double bottoms and the higher close, this close, higher close, double bottoms, put out the advanced multi-pivot line. Just draw it. It's got to be automatic. I can't tell you how many people from breakfast that I've met, that I've mentored in the last two or three weeks, and I almost never see these lines. I, I scratch. I'm scratching my head, going, "Where are they? What are you guys doing?" I know a few of you use them, but all right. New high for the move. New close, high close for the move. Make a high close in our lower third. And basically, we've got quadruple highs here. Well, the gap comes in a minute, but we close lower. This is starting to look significant. And we get a morning gap higher here on, well, I should say Sunday afternoon or Monday morning if you're in Asia, gap higher. Here's the close. Here's the opening. So we've got a new box. And note that we have a higher high and a higher low. And we've extended the range by about, I don't know, five, six, seven pips. So we've had a total of about 12 pips to this range. But it's not much. And nice follow through to the downside. Double bottoms, close in the upper third, put out the advanced multi pivot line. Now you've got two higher lows. And we'll see how price deals with that. And you can see the multi-pivot line holding. <coughs> can anybody tell me why it's important to have this line sitting out there? Nobody? You guys there? Well, orient yourself. Okay, I'll give you that, but what else? It is a multi-pivot line, Abdu. That might be. Yes, to see which way the range will break out. But there's a really simple... Yeah, you're going to see the response to it. There's a real simple, um, uh, almost insidious reason. Think of people that have never been in this class. Think of non-market geometry traders. It's a double line. What are they going to do if these bottoms get broken? Okay, so don't you want that line there so that you know it's there and you're, you know, ready? 
I mean, you may not be ready to trade, but it, it, you can draw this line one more time. If not there, you should be drawing it here and no later than here. And why is it important? And look how well this works. That's why. Because now every breakout trader in the world, in both hemispheres, has, ha has their orders in this market. It's just the nature of the, the stupidity of this market. So you need to know. Now, you may not be ready to trade, but you want to be in tune with this market every tick that you watch, every bar that you watch. So when you walk back in the room, if you have this line, you're wondering, is this line going to hold, or are we going to go back up and test the top of the box? That's why we box, and that's why we're looking for structure. Wide range bar, try and go higher, close near or low. But we're still right on the multi-pivot line. Somebody said earlier, it might become a multi-pivot line. Do I have to say this again? How often do you draw these that they are multi-pivot lines? Practice. When you say things like that, I know that you're not convinced and you're not doing it on your charts. Okay, look at how many bars respected this line. Now that you have it on here, when it breaks through, you should be thinking, well, that's significant. And we're also testing this high. We've been making higher lows and higher highs. Now, for the first time, we've broken one of our lows. You can't see it. There's a green dot up there. Maybe I can, can I move this? Yeah. Well, now it's off the screen. We'll, we'll do that. Well, let it be off the screen. It's fine. So, this is the A pivot. Here's a B pivot. And here's a brand new A pivot up here. You said before that Breakout traders account for about 60% of the traders out there, right? Yeah, at least, yeah. It's hard to believe, don't you? Hard, don't you think? Do you also have a weak three drives to the top, which may have heightened one's attention to what's next? Mm. Yes, except I don't have... Well, maybe I do. If you, I kinda, if you think this is one, two, three... And you want to count this as one, two, three, and a break. I guess it's okay, but I don't. I I'm not that alert at the moment. How about that? If you are no, but no, Timmy. If you are, that's fine. Mark it and count it. That's fine. Look for the pair, though. Okay. And if you're going to mark these three tops, then you definitely should be saying, here's one, here's two, here's three, and here's my bust of the bottom. So the highs held and the three drives to the low just got busted. That's significant. I have, that's, you know, fine observation. I'm not thinking that fine, but there's nothing wrong with that, Tim. It's that you're thinking ahead of the, you're thinking ahead of the pack, okay? Any edge you can get on the market is worth its weight in gold. If you're thinking seven steps ahead of the market instead of one, think how far ahead you are. And this is how you get it, by observations like that, Tim. By breaking out here. And, and, know, and say, oh, okay, hey, take a look at the breakout here. All right, so now I can mark another alternating pivot. Mark alternating pivots. Count them. Think what it means. Now we've taken out two prior lows. So this definitely looks like a significant high. Now we've got a top. We've got a lower top. See it? We don't have a bottom now. Well, all the way down here, I guess we do. But So we're searching for a bottom, aren't we? 
we have a wide bottom but and and maybe that's it but you know we're falling this is it's not huge because this range is not huge but this is free space okay there we go that's a bottom near double bottoms makes a new low but closes on its high and it's a wider range bar than the prior bar let's see what happens to that put out the advanced multi-pivot line let's see what happens to it so far some follow through so far more follow through and now if you look at it you can look at it this way this high now I've got one two three higher highs what percentage of the market do you think are actually paying attention in in that kind of detail zero yeah that's why so few people make money. Again, every edge, every every step or edge that you are ahead of the market is worth its weight in gold. And if you can get five or six steps ahead of the market, it's like rolling forward stops, okay? If you're five steps ahead of the market, it makes it so much easier to trade. Because when you get to the nexus area and it's time to trade, you already understand what's going on. Everybody else is trying to figure it out. You're already three or four moves ahead. That's how you become a winning trader. Bottom holds. Now we're going to find out about this box. Okay, testing the tops. Testing the top. Testing the top. You might have thought we wouldn't see that top again, but we're right back up there, and it's holding, and it's holding, and it's holding. Now we're coming down to test the bottom. Now we break and close below the bottoms. So now we've gone through three lows. Closing our lower third, but no follow through and double bottoms. No follow through and double bottoms. Put your advanced multi pivot line. I'm going to mark it with green. This shouldn't say B yet, but I'll just leave it. We've got A up here and AB blue going on. Start to head higher. Close in the middle. Put the advanced multi pivot line out. Let's see what we got. Now we've got a box again. Now we've got a lower low and a lower high. Here. You can see price walking down. Do you see it? If you just mark out the advanced multi pivot lines, You don't have to do the work. When you have a close around the opening price, is that meaningful of anything? Um, these are time-based bars. It's that, you know what? That's just indicative of. I personally don't find it anything special, Gary, un until you start to get three, four, five. But you know, one at one right after the other is pretty relatively meaningless because. These closes are just based on a computer spitting out a price and a new bar. So that's and nothing more than that. That's what I, that's one thing I don't like about time-based bars. Every every type of bar has a downside. Most of them have upsides as well. But the bad news is these just print to print. So we got a high and a low. Why not have a blue C pivot at MLB?
Well, if that's your if that's your vision, go ahead. Here's my vision. You ready, Petra? We're in a very narrow range. I don't need a median line this small. If we stay in this range, if we don't have range extension, I there's no there's no reason to play. Okay? I do. What's the bad side to tick bars? I ask a day that we're not using tick bars. So you have blue MLA and blue LB, yes. So Petra, there's no point to me if this ends up being C, well this if this ends up being C, first of all, let me ask you a question, Petra. <clears throat> what is what's going on with price action right now? Are we making higher lows or lower lows? I'm asking Petra. Okay, if we're making lower lows and we haven't taken out a high, aren't we still looking for a bottom, Petra? So why be so eager to mark in a C? Let the market unfold. Okay, if we start taking on highs, you can come back and say, you know what, this must be C. I, I, I'm not ready to trade anyway yet, Petra. My A and B isn't written in stone yet. I, I'll move it around if I have to. Because right now, take a look. I've got in front of me, I've got a 45 pip range. So I don't have to hurry. And we're still moving lower. So there's no hurry for me to mark a C. I'm not going to move it that fast. I've got something in the other direction going on with the green on purpose because I don't know where we're going yet. So I'm watching this small box. Petra, does that actually make sense? Because it was a very good question. Okay, how about the rest of you? Do you get it? There's no reason to make that a C yet. Now, if you take out this high, you might want to make that a C and draw it in and get an upsloper. But right now, we went from making higher lows and now we're making lower lows. So let's just wait till we find a bottom. Okay, this is where I decided that this was B here. And again, I'm doing something on a smaller and opposite scale with green. You can see the top being tested, tested, tested. You know, again, if you're not convinced of these lines, you know the multi-pivot line in advance. You don't have to wait for it to be made. Same thing over here. Same thing here. This one didn't get tested, but the break was significant because it gave you a lower structure in advance. Now, what's going on right now? Yeah, I don't even want to call it a range. Nothing. I mean, we're talking about 10 pips wide. And it only just got bigger just because something rolled off the top. All right, testing the bottom but closing in the center. We leave a series of lower lows and some lower closes. This one closes up in its upper third. So I'm going to mark it as a low. But, Petra, once again, it's a lower low. So I'm still not ready. And now I've got double bottoms. 
and now I've got upward movement and now I'm retesting my multi pivot line and retesting it and retesting it now we're moving away to the upside now we're testing the upside of the box retesting the upside of the box it it looks like it's gonna give but we had this line all the way over here and it looked like it was going to give here and it held and we spawned a lower downside now we're up at, up at it again and we spawned it over here so let's see what happens okay we break out and I'll mark it as a higher box but in the big scheme of things Petra look at the close see it I will mark it as a higher high, but yeah, all these closes are inside this box. So I'm not too excited yet. If I start to get upside action, I'll get excited. And we're right back in the prior box. I'm going to leave this as the high. That's fine, but look where we are. We're right back in the narrow box. So at that point, that makes me think, you know, this was a one-hit wonder right here. And it wasn't very meaningful at all. So let's see how long the box will hold. Far too long. Okay, we're back testing the highs. And they, I should. Have, I'm sorry, I should have the median line in here somewhere. I, I dropped the ball. I got C, so I should be drawing. Now, now we've got a median line. Just because you have a median line does not mean that you have to trade. You can trade. There's nothing wrong with trading, but you don't have to trade. Let's look at this median line. For me, I'll use Shane's pen here. For me, this is pretty much what I got. And if I'm going to go this is a down sloping median line. If I'm going to choose to go short on this, I'm shorting right into what? Right into the range. Not resistance. Right into the range. I'm going to get short. I have to cut through all of this and I might but you know it to me it looks like tough sledding right so why look why I just drew it for you look at it This is the 14th through the 18th, and we've got a total, let's take a look, a total of 50 pips. I don't trade for 50 pips. How about energy built up within the range? Well, okay, Bob, but this is where you have to choose your poison, okay? Think of, let's think about this. If you build a bucket, you with me, Bob? And I build the side, and Gary will get this right away. I build the sides, hang, just hang on. And I build the sides out of really heavy 
stainless steel. And I build the bottom out of really heavy stainless steel. Okay. And I put energy absorbing bricks in the bottom of this bucket. Are you with me so far? And then I fill the bucket full of dynamite. You with me, Bob? So it's packed with energy, like you said. Is that a correct analogy? Now, I put an aluminum foil top on this. Free space. If I think the energy is about to be expended, or may be expended, I don't know about the timing. If it may be expended, is it likely, it, is it more likely to expend through the energy absorbing material and the stainless steel bottom or the stainless steel sides, or is it more likely to blow the top? So, because the range is so small, I'm not that hot. I don't have to trade just because I have a median line. Yeah, this thing's got a lot of energy, but, you know, it had a lot of energy here. It had a lot of energy here. It's picked up more energy now, and picked up more energy now, and picked up more energy now, and picked up more energy now. But there's lots of spaces along the way here that I could have put on a trade and yet we've gone nowhere absolutely nowhere if you connected the majority of the closes they're right down the center here and we've only got you know if if you've got a 200 pip range that's one thing but we get a 50 pip range and stops in the candidate i tend to use 20 pips if i take a 20 pip stop it's not possible for me to even consider three to one so I'm not eager to trade. If we get out of this, does that make sense at all? I'm not trying to browbeat you. I'm trying to explain. I want you guys to understand why I'm making decisions. Okay? This is not, hey, this is a pretty picture. I made lots of money. I don't care about that part. What I care about is that as we go through this, you understand that why I make the decisions I make. Why I draw the lines, I well, you know, I've got a line sitting in front of me, in front of me, and it's downsloped. Well, and I guarantee you, most of you are thinking, I guess he's about to go short. I want to know how this line works, but I may choose to ignore the short, just because there's a downsloping line and there's a test and retest does not mean that I'm going to deem it an opportunity, okay? I don't like all of this. That don't work for me. All right, so let me, I'm sure I'll be drawing with the pen again, but at the moment, let's stop. Okay, so let's see what happens. It swings back up. These are the things I need to watch more carefully. Yes, with three lower highs, this market is looking short, but my calls in the past have been in error frequently. Well, okay. My call, wait. Yeah, I think the psychology is extremely important. My calls in the past, okay. So, again, it's not just that you have a line. It's not just that you're following along structure and saying, well, I've got some lower highs all that's fine and good but it's hard to cut through this much nonsense isn't it and by the time you do you've spent a lot of that energy think about it that way Bob um, do you have a sawzall at home okay you know Bob when you use a sawzall and the blades um, not particularly sharp. You're trying to cut something really dense. And at first it's just hard. Then it's really hard. It's hard to cut. Then it's really hard to cut. And pretty soon the blade is smoking. And it's vibrating like crazy. It's spending all the energy. And you ain't going nowhere. But that I got to tell you. Like you know. Sawzalls are just loaded with energy. Aren't they? 
but you can stand there at the wrong moment using the wrong blade in the wrong material and push against that thing to the point where you start to sweat your hands get tired and eventually you're gonna break, you're gonna break the blade so just because you got a tool so to speak doesn't mean you're gonna win the war here and we want to pick wars that we can win and that means we want to be thinking in advance we want to be several moves and my thoughts at this point are okay I got a down sloper I am making lower lows and lower highs but look at look at the territory that I have to go through so what's my risk reward I mean as I look at it can I imagine getting to the lower parallel the median line is not going to do it for me can I imagine getting to the lower parallel geez it sure looks like I got to go through the hell of a uh, you know it's just a swamp yeah it's exactly right swamp lit so do you want that trade really and the median line starts relatively narrow I have to get the lower parallel just to get three to one so do I want that trade I'm gonna pass on it but I, I don't feel bad about drawing the line it tells me a lot about the market right we'll see if the market reacts to it if I miss the opportunity it's only an opportunity lost that's okay there'll be other opportunities so that's where the short would be now I can't afford to be above here but that's fine I can be above C and above this but look at the size of the go no go and project it downward I'm at one to one at the median line I mean I, I got a long ways to go so I, I'm gonna pass on this one You know, for the life of me, I can't remember why I wrote Andrews 101 there, but. All right, so we come down here. Oh, was it the retest? Okay, if you remember. Thanks, BJ. Um. I could easily draw, now you guys see me draw frequency lines. Here's the frequency line. Just in outer space, right? It's just a set of bars that that catch my eye. It's nothing more than that. And you should just be drawing them on your market. You don't even draw them to use them. Just draw them to increase your ability to see frequency okay this one ends up going nowhere so we start to move to the downside and we're testing this low great now before you get depressed that you didn't take this short take a look at it you would have been short at 70 and even at the low you're only 30 pips the close you're only 20 pips you haven't done anything yet it just feels like oh my god I missed a huge trade you didn't miss anything with all that ranging the potential energy accumulated has to explode at some point absolutely and if I was gonna bet Gary using the analogy we just talked about you know what do you think my predilection is I don't see it in the charts yet but my guess is that the energy is going to explode to which side do you, what do you think now if we're to the downside I don't I don't see it Al because we got to cut through all this stuff now if we get far below this and are coming back up to test it I might get on that side of the market follow me 
if you get if we get into clear air on the downside and then come up to test it and this becomes the ceiling then I'll move to the dark side I'll be I know I'll be more than willing to sell but right now we got to make some movement to the downside we've got we've got to have range extension to the downside or I I'm just not interested and I mean you know 70 pips to the downside something like that so we just kind of tootling along triple bottoms and we test the median line but close on the high that's Andrews 101 here's our we're gonna go from the upper parallel to the lower parallel when it closes after touching the median line I mark it. I'm still in the same range. Lower lows, and most people may be bored. Flat, or I think flat or short, yeah. Bored, flat, or short, is, all three is fine. Sure. And when everybody's asleep, isn't that when most likely eventually something will happen? If you get lulled to sleep. For the people that just trade Canada, I've got several people that just trade Canada. This is a force pivot. It's not a potential pivot. It's a force pivot, yeah. And Gary says it happens to me all the time. It happens to everybody all the time. You know, if, you, if you're watching something closely, actually, i got to tell you, Gary, <clears throat> and all you guys, It doesn't usually happen at three o'clock in the morning, you know, when I when I'm trading before you guys. But there'll be times in the afternoon when I have free time and I'm watching the market and if it's not doing anything and not giving me any stimulus, I'll find that it's hard for me to keep my eyes open. Have you ever found yourself in that position? Okay, now I got a question for all of you that said yes. How how well do you think your trade's going to be if you're asleep like that? Because you're basically asleep. Shockingly poor is exactly right. Because somebody is needle sharp. <coughs> And that's why these lines, even the down sloper that you're not using, is so important because you need to be three or four or five moves ahead of the market because if you do get a little, your focus starts to waver a little bit and something happens, it's okay because you've already got some some of the move in your pocket, okay? And you, if you mark it on your screen and you're nodding off, and something starts to happen, it's easy to catch up. It's easy to catch up. Does that make sense? So, as we come down and test the median line and turn, double tops, or double bottom, sorry. You know exactly where you are. So our, we're advanced multi-pivot line. Look at the test and the close. You can see the value of it. Now I've marked an A. When we finally close above all of this, I'm going to mark this as B. Gotta try anyway. And right at the upper parallel, we test the upper parallel one, two, three times. And then pull back. So this is Andrew's one. 
101. This is Andrews 101. I'm now going to mark this MLC. Why am I doing this? Why do I care? Because I've already got a downsloper. I want to stay oriented. I'm going to freshen up the frequency. That's exactly right, BJ. I'm not wild about the downside, but it might be a great trade. It might also tell me something about either side. Now you can see it's sloped more negatively to the downside. It is, of course, narrow, narrow. But the the steeper the slope, the more price is going to have to perform. Now, we're quite a bit inside of this and haven't been to the upper parallel. So now we get to the median line. Zoom it. Could MLC also be used as a sliding parallel in the future? Sliding parallel for what, David? For the green? No. The rule is you can draw one sliding parallel and only one sliding parallel, okay? If they drop you in the desert, uh, what's the thing with Johnny Depp, the, one of the pirates of the Caribbean? They put him on a deserted island and they give him a, a gun with one bullet and enough water to last one day. And the reason they do that is because, of course, when it, when you've had enough, you can go ahead and kill yourself. Now, so the rule is you can draw one sliding parallel. And the one sliding parallel that you can draw to this green, you can't do it down here after we've already had this excursion up here or up here. If you drew it here, it's already been busted. Now, we haven't had a close above it, so it wouldn't break my heart if you left it out there and just said, okay, you know what, that's the slop on this median line. But you can't not draw these in and then later on pull this. And relative to the size of this median, look how big it is. This move to the outside is nothing. It's meaningless. That's just noise, okay? All right, so we're zooming the red median line. Second close below the median line. There's our retest, and it's a do -si do so to speak, or a lazy Z, we used to call it. We're back on the upside. We've zoomed the other side. And there's our retest of everything. If you wanted a retest that was actually closing in the middle, there's your retest. We're not going anywhere, are we? Not yet. Okay, now we've tested the median line, the green median line again. We're still closing in the same place. We're still testing the green median line. A lower low, but we're closing up at the red median line. Higher close, higher low. I just see those three. You saw me mark these over here. There are others. Here's here's three three others. I mean, there are plenty that you might look at. I liked price flirting with these median lines back and forth right here that was part of the reason that you know we're we're higher we're lower we're higher we're lower and now we're pulling out so I like the frequency of these three and I just drew it I you're gonna have to you know if you want it if you want to use frequency you're gonna have to practice and some of you 
will find that it's not your thing. Okay? That's okay. Just stick with media lines. It, it, it is subjective. There's no doubt about it. And here's our test on this frequency, and it's a nice frequency. All right, now we're busting through it to the back side. Okay, so maybe it's a center line. Maybe it's just a frequency that is useless. We're still at the median line. We're still above the red median line. What about the advanced multi-pivot line on that low? Sure, you, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I need a, I need a, uh, here's a blue. There you go. Draw them, absolutely. Busted. Okay, that's fine because we're in a down sloping median line set. Now, we are getting some range extension, but we're talking about 15 pips here. We need some significant range extension. We need to be free and clear of all of this. And then we can go ahead and trade to the downside by coming back up to the bottom of the range. Okay? Could you have traded here? Yes. Do you have money in the bank? Absolutely. Do you have at this point? Do you have the ability to have moved a stop? Sure. You could have taken this trade. There's nothing wrong with this trade over here. Absolutely nothing wrong with this trade. It's a trade I chose not to take. I saw it. I looked at it. I saw all the meat in here, and thought, you know what? It, if we if we get through it, it's going to be a long road. And it was more than a day to get through. And we'll see what the downside brings us. All right, now we test the red lower parallel, which is Andrews 101. If we go through the median line, we should get to the parallel. We get to the lower parallel, and look at the close all the way back up at or above the green median line. It shoots out of the hole. That's Andrews 101. Not only does it make the lower parallel, but it reverses at the lower parallel. So it's a forced pivot. So now, let's watch. I take this frequency. I, let's do it the easy way. Instead of trying to do three things at once. We make our force pivot. We make a higher high. I copy that frequency over to this bar. Why this bar? Well, look at it. Lowest close. If you want to put a label on it, this is the last bearish bar in this move down. If we start up. If we if we don't start up, then this mark is meaningless, right? But if we do start higher, this is the last bearish bar in this section on the way down. This bar made a little low, but the close is exactly the opposite of what's going on. It's a springboard. Get it? I mean, you might even think of this as, hey, this is the fulcrum, and it just sprang to the upside. How about that? It's another way to think about it. In any case, that's the lowest low for the moment. Why do you choose 
I'm look well, Lewis. Let's think about it. I'm marking a change. If you think about it, I'm marking a change in behavior, aren't I? If this is the last bearish bar and we start higher, this is a change in behavior. So I'm going to put my frequency. If the frequency is ever going to be meaningful, lose it or use it. I, I use it or lose it, I guess you should say. I don't know how I'm going to use it, but whatever I'm going to mark, whether it's that or a median line or whatever, um, if I need a significant bar, this is the bar, not this bar. This bar is going to be used for a low, a forced pivot. You could find yourself putting these in and then scrubbing them as they don't hold up. Yeah, sure. Why not? It'll keep your eyes from drooping, if nothing else. How about that? Yeah, lines are cheap. And they'll keep you in the game. They, they'll literally keep you in the game. It's, it's like the kids, you know, you watch high school baseball or Little League. And the kids that aren't playing, what do they do between innings? Do you what, do you know? They're either running laps or they're throwing balls on the side. They're doing something. Well, some of them are keeping records. Yeah, sure. No, they don't. If they look at their cell phones, if you're if you're a good coach, they're fired. Get off the team. Although I have to tell you, look, talking to my kids. It's become such endemic, so, so endemic in this society. I, I guess if you fired every, if you threw every kid off the te team that brought a cell phone, yeah, I think it is a disease. You wouldn't have anybody on the team probably. Gary and I have talked about that. It's just amazing, but I guess that's a cultural difference, a cultural shift. It's a change of behavior, right? <clears throat> anyway, all right, now we get another bar. Forced pivot, it turns at the lower parallel, right at the median line, at the lower parallel. It's not it's not turning in space, it's turning right at the lower parallel. Okay? So now we've got another bar that makes a low, closes on its high. Now we've got two higher highs. When this bar forms, I just take the frequency and put it on the low and in effect now I've got a channel if you will I'm thinking about it like a median line I know it's probably disturbing to some of you but upper parallel lower parallel median line or if you want to center line action reaction but to me, this is just a median line. I don't, I don't care if it's if it's not equidistant. It's meaningless to me. But that's just that's come from that comes from working with diamonds for lots of years. As I draw it, I'm not drawing it because it catches this low. But as I put it in here, I go, well, I like that it grabs this low. So this thing maybe has some frequency going. Where is it going? I don't know, but it, it's got some frequency. Now take a look. Now I've got one, two, three higher highs after making a significant low that closed on its high. This picture is different than this picture. Do you see it? It's almost like I could draw a line and fold the paper and only look at one side. This side looks different than this side. Now I've got one, two, three, four highs. And you can see I'm pulling away from the downside action. I'm closing on or above my upper frequency line. Looks like a 3D box with the frequency lines. Yeah, oh, I like that. See if you can see the box that Gary's talking about.
tunnel through the air. Well, you know what? That's a bad phrase to use here, but okay. <laughs> I know. Sorry. I won't damn you, Maseo. It's okay. I know you meant it tongue in cheek. <clears throat> anyway. He was a tunnel through your pocket, Maseo. Right to your wallet. All right, now we zoom everything. Everything. The red upper parallel, the green upper parallel, my frequency line, it all gets zoomed. Now you can look at this as one of two ways, which we'll talk. I want you to think of. Think about it in the head. Take a second while I take a drink of tea here. And, th and look at exactly what's going on. And try and be ahead of the market. Everybody oriented? Do you have some ideas? With the zoom, we need a retest, but what level? Okay, that's a good question. What, what do we have drawn in here? We've got lower parallel, median line, median line, upper parallel, median line. I added a sliding parallel. Dave, David, immediately when we get that kind of distance, we're about three quarters of the way through the distance from median line to upper parallel. When we get up here uh, with this close, I'm just going to add a sliding parallel. And this is the only sliding parallel I'm going to add. If it gets busted, I'm done with sliding parallels. I can put out a warning line, which is equidistant, but this is the this is the level right here. So with with the zoom, we need to retest what level. Anybody have an answer? What could we retest? Red, sure. Anything else? Just red? <coughs> Frequency? Well, the green I'm gonna I'm iffy on because it's closed so I mean, is it a zoom? Is it right at it? Yeah. This frequency right here. Or the red. Those are the two that I would think of is likely to be retested. I don't now I think this is significant. Or I wouldn't spend so much time having fun with the crayon. Look at it. What is that? I know you can see I'm having fun. What is that? It's our nexus. Having that bar zoom the upper, hang on. Yeah, I, I put a thank you very much. Of surrender flag. Alice says, having that bar zoom the upper red median line, can we conclude the previous high is taken out? Uh, on a slanted basis, yes. This is the highest high on a slanted basis. On a slope basis, if you turn your head to the right on the green, we've made a new high. We've made a new high against the red. Does that answer your question now? Oh, and look my darn it, look look what happens. My crayon drawing moves. Okay, fine, be that way. 
let's watch another bar. Gary's looking for a retest. Well, there you go, buddy. I'm going to give it a retest of the the red. I'm going to give it a retest of the brown. And if you think it's zoomed the green, I'm going to give it a retest of the green. So we got all the retests we needed, don't we? We fulfilled all the be all the Andrews laws necessary. The brown is really sloppy relative to the red. Okay. Um, let me let me let me point this out. Which is sloppier now? Which is the sloppiest line set right now? The red. We blew through the red. Just as the green was not being respected down here, red's not being respected at all. Sure, but I just drew this sliding parallel now, so you can't count that, right? So it's all relative. It's like this. Think of it this way. It's like a lens that's out of focus. And as we come into this nexus, our vision is going to get diamond sharp. Does that make sense? But as it's forming right now, it's sloppy. That's why we need to be several steps ahead. That's why we need to be paying attention to each and every bar. That's why we need to be paying attention to the details like, okay, we zoomed. Are we going to get a retest? Yes, we retested everything we needed to retest. So all our obligations have been fulfilled. Do you follow me? There's nothing hanging over our head. Now, here's, what you, here's the question you have to ask yourself. If you think this is the nexus, we've got, let's take a look, one, two, three, four, five higher highs, and one, two, three, four, five higher lows. I'll bet if you go back all the way to the beginning where we watched, started watching, you're not going to find that long of a run. So, have we overreached ourselves and this is stretched out too far? Or, on a slanted basis, are we so far swung outside of the muck and mire? that we're in a new phase? Those are the two questions. Are we going to pull right back into the crap? Or have we pulled out on a slanted basis and this will act as support because it's the old swamp? Does that make sense? So now, if you're in the nexus and you're given an opportunity to trade, you're not given one yet, but if you're given an opportunity to trade, which side do you want to trade on? Gary says we're at the zero point. All possibilities need to buy bars. Okay. Trade with the potential. Clear of the monk swap trade. Okay. This is what I think. We spring another bar. We close up here. 
So we've got three closes on the outside of our frequency bar. And now we've got three closes above the red upper parallel. We've got two closes above the green. And if you want, we're dancing on the serpentine or backside of this red down sloping upper parallel. Personally, I don't think we're going to stay here very long. We're crawl Andrew, yeah, it's Andrews. We're crawling along the backside here. I don't think we're going to stay here very long, and I don't think we're set for the downside. I think we're set to stay out of the swamp and move to the upside. Do you see the decision process? Okay, now let's talk about the stop. Yeah, okay. Where is the stop? Okay. Sorry, I have to draw again. So momentum, it's not momentum like you're thinking, John. It's momentum in the sense that we're out of this. The question now is, are we out of this and are we going to stay out of this? Or are we out of this and then we're going to pull right back into this? Do you see the two questions, John? It either takes off or it doesn't. If it does not take off, BJ, where's the stop? This is a different kind of stop than you guys have probably, I doubt you've used it before, and I don't even know that I've showed you before. Interesting, using stop based on all the slanted lines versus horizontals. What a concept. The idea here basically is if we get back into the swamp, you know, you Gary, you're my can't, you're my hiking partner, okay? BJ, watch. Gary and I are hiking, okay? We've been lost in a swamp for 20 days. We think we see civilization ahead. We're out of water. I'm dying of thirst. I'm hungry. He's dying of thirst. He's hungry. We got one bullet, okay? We start to get out here and we start to see clear air follow me so far everybody not just Gary everybody do you follow me or not you have to you, if you don't understand the analogy tell me now shoot Gary no as we get out here, it, you know, it might be an illusion, but as we get out here and we think, I think, you know, I can breathe better, it smells better, it looks better, I think I can even see clear space. If we end up back in the swamp, Gary, take the bullet and shoot me. I'm done. I do not want to go through any more of this. Do you see that? BJ, do you see that as a stop now? This is poison. I want nothing to do with this. It's defining the point where the idea is wrong. That's exactly right, John. Thank you. I couldn't say it better. You're going to be elated, maybe a bit euphoric, but if it turns out to be a mirage, you're going to shoot somebody. Well, actually, no, I want to be shot. Absolutely, Baseo. You have everything right except for one thing. I'm not going to shoot somebody. I want to be shot. I do not want to go through this anymore. Okay? Just take me out of my misery. You have my permission, and here's the paper that says don't go to jail. Um, I only did what he asked me to do. Okay? So I'm willing to put this kind of stop in here. It looks weird to you, but it's a just kill me. It's okay. On a slope basis, the stop is under the prior low. There you go. 
Turn your head and look. The easy answer is we're back in the swap. But on a slope basis, it also makes some market structure sense. Now, I think we're either going to turn and head back in the swamp. Yeah, Gary sees it. If you turn your head, you, should, you can see where the stop should be. We should either turn and head back into the swamp, in which case I just want out. I'm wrong. Or I know it's sprung out of the swamp, but what do I have up here? I finally have clean air, finally. And if I have clean air, I'm likely to spring higher. So I'll choose the clean air. And it's, if it is clean air, it's not going to stay here long. It's going to expand, finally. That can that we built that had solid sides and absorbing material in the bottom and paper foil on top, it's going to expand. And it's going to expend its energy. So. It's not going to stay here for 15 bars. If it does, we're right. We're going right back in the swamp. So this is a now or never moment right here. Now this is one that's not. It's not that easy to see. I get it. But again, you're never going to see it unless you go through it a few times. And you know, at least this time, I can hold your hand and we can walk through it step by step. Maybe the next time you'll be able to see it yourself a few times and then you'll try and trade it make money don't make it money doesn't matter it's I see it I try and trade it okay well at least I've added that to my tool book eventually you'll start to make money on these they're weird they don't come up all the time but you see them in markets like Canada where things tend to just do nothing and bore you to death and then all of a sudden they start to move everybody get it If you took the trade, Tim, would you take it off of? Oh, yeah. I could see stop better with head left where stop is outside the cube. Well, okay. Listen to what Gary's saying. He sees the three dimensional cube, and the stop is the move outside of the cube. So, let me get back to David. If you took the trade, Tim, would you take it if off? Would you take it? off if too much time went by before a spring higher no David I don't I know people that's, I call those boredom stops I know people have boredom stops when I put my trades on I put a entry a limit entry a limit buy or a limit sell and then I put a stop loss then you go ahead and hit my stop actually I don't know that this has anything to do with RBAC and one of the things that was bothering me you know, we are at 109, and Claudette we're talking about. And one of the things that made, made me wonder was, are they going to get tired of this move, thing moving to the upside? And say, you know what, 110 is a hot wire, don't touch it. But, you know what, after being in the swamp so long, I'm willing to find out if they're, if they're you know, going to step in. I think the swamp is people worried that they're going to be up here trying to stop behavior. Again, Canada is a dirty float. They have people that intervene for them at the Royal Bank of Canada mostly. That and they give them a range. Right today, you know what? I don't want to see it below below X and above or above X. Or sometimes they'll just give them one side. You know what? I don't want it to see. Do or sometimes they don't give many direction. Go ahead and trade. Is there anything? Was there another stop here? Let's see. Or another message. So, David, I put my limit order in. I put my stop in. We can talk about profits in a second. I'm going to give you the median line now.
here's the median line and it's a big fat slow upsloper um, I'm gonna put my limit order in David I'm gonna put my stop in and I'm gonna have a logical profit target I may put an order in there or I may manage to it with stops below one or the other okay but once I've once I've got that going if I get filled I'll move my stop further up based on price action and market structure but not out of boredom now I don't have a problem if you put it in your trading plan David and you were talking about mentoring I'll be you know and I'll be sending you something but uh, when I work with mentoring students if if you know I, for example I have somebody in mentoring that when they're in a trade if they're too if they have two closes outside of a median line their mind is fried they can't deal with it it doesn't work for them well okay that's fine put that in your trading plan if it starts to close outside of the median line I don't want to play anymore fine same thing here if you can say if within five bars it's still boring I prefer to just try and work my way out of flat that's fine I don't have any problem with that at one point at David I actually had that had that in my trading plan I don't anymore now I just put them on leave them if it hits my stop it hits my stop period The more you screw around with your initial plan for no reason other than boredom, the easier it is to continue to change it every time. So let me just, you know what? I don't like this bar. Let me change it. This bar doesn't make me feel good. Now let me change it again. Pretty soon you're changing it all the time. So try and be consistent. Second, I swear someone's banging on my on the uh, bat cave one door door. One second. Sorry, it was only my trumpet playing monkey. All right. So, we've got a nexus in front of us. I don't think price is going to stay in this nexus very long. What kind of target might we have? I think we've got at least the upper parallel. You think that's unreasonable? Which is almost kind of, if you look at it, it's really kind of double the range. At least that, and I'll try and manage. But I think it has a lot of energy a huge amount of energy built up and my drawing has gone skewed again so I'll just get rid of it if you tip your head we've got well you don't even have to tip your head look at this we got all this energy built up and yes it has traveled down enough We're only retesting the highs really at the upper parallel, 110.10. 109.90 was the prior high, so it might get a bit, quite a bit more. Has this played out live? Are you peeking back? No. I don't even know. Why would I peek back? Have you developed the ability to keep the large view in mind? I, I can see, Maseo, this is the honest to God truth. 
I can see the larger picture ahead. Okay? That's the ability to see multiple moves ahead. So, no, I don't have to go back and look at it. So, Bob likes this meeting line. So, the problem with this meeting line, Bob, is can you imagine coming down here to get you give you an entry? And what and what are the problems with that? Yeah, you've got to. It's too far. It's not not only have we already visited the bottom, but if we if we got all the way down there, we'd be right back in the swamp. I'm a, I want you to shoot me, Bob. If we get down there, please shoot me. Put me out of my mi misery, please. I wouldn't have thought about the blue being as a long entry, thinking back to where we started. No, we're looking for frequency now for targets. That's all That's all this is for. Okay? Not every line is used for the same thing. Now, notice I also liked... Let's not neglect this. The frequency of these three lines right here, which are the tops of the nexus. Do you see it? Um, I, I don't know if I can. Maybe I can. Okay. Uh, ahead. Okay. And so I connect them. That's ex That's extended out. Now I extend them back just to see what they mean. And look what they mean. They give, I also connect to the C pivot. So it's geometry at its best. This really is the nexus. We're either going to bust this. Yeah, it's crystalline. It's, we're either going to bust this or... Gary is going to turn to his right and shoot me in the head. Okay? It's that simple. He's going to, He's promised me he'd put me out of my misery. So I'm, even though the, I, I know you might be tempted to say, well, with this frequency line right in front of you, you're really going to get short? Really? I mean, really going to get long? You're going to take a long right in front of this frequency line? Yes, I am. It's okay. Because I've got a death stop here. It's only one stop. It's okay. And, you know, it's like, a, you know, this is a bad analogy, and I, I apologize for it in advance. <laughs> uh, Timmy says too many gun references, and, and he's laughing. Um, well, you really like this one, Timmy. Ready? If we get down to here... I'd like assisted suicide, please. Okay. I don't want to go on. Not anymore. I'm done. I've had enough. And, and I know that's a serious subject, but I, I don't have any better analogy than that. This is a stop that you're not going to see every day. You're never going to see it in the midday session. Just put me out of my misery. Million billion bees that are I do, is that real? Right? Is that what that is? Oh, okay. I was, I was like, what the? <laughs> okay, everybody go to million billion bees and see how kinky Tim is. <laughs> I'm sure I don't want to know. Anyway, let's see what happens. Now, this is my entry are we looking I'm gonna I'm gonna slap your hands Tim with a ruler like a Catholic nun not that I have ever been in a nunnery but okay we zoom our frequency line and we test the blue 
median line. So if you were worried about we've swung out too far and we may be at the edge, we slow down for one, for, sorry, for one, two bars that gives us this nice multi-pivot line and then we break out to the upside. So can you tell me what these people are right here? Uh, they may be breakout buyers, but more importantly, what are they? You know, forget about that category of buyers, like nitwit buyers. What what are we seeing? Can anybody tell me? You're close, Ms. Hale. Fuel for the fire, close. Euphoric, no. Stops being hit, maybe. What else? But we're so far past the highs, this was probably the stops being hit. Remember, people don't have slope lines, so they're not selling against this. Okay, Gary, it's all right. I'll see you in a little while. This is fresh, that's right, demand coming in. Fresh buyers. Not profit taking, fresh buyers. We've already gone up. Look at how many, we've already gone up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven bars. Profit taking has already happened. Stop losses have already been hit. Natural buyers? Okay. Tim, this exact setup you showed us on natural gas, I think last week, you framed this as not for the faint of heart. I absolutely agree. This is a very, very aggressive entry. But aren't we here for, like I said, this is not Physics 101. This is Physics 107. Why are people buying here? Jose, I have a simple answer. Can you give it to me? Stretch your mind. Yeah, Abdu's got, Abdu. Ding, ding, ding. You know what? I was going to use four words. You used three. It's even better. It's, they're buying because it's going up. It's out of the swap. It's going up. They're getting long. Now, I I just happen to be long in front of them, but they smell the fresh air, too. They want some. Does that make sense? I don't see anybody typing. Are you guys asleep, or does that make sense? Is the swap flow a clue? Where? Guys are covering their shirts here, Al. Above the brown line. Um... Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I think the swap flow actually comes. I mean, for me, it's, it's, I got to tell you, if you're actually paying as much attention as you should be paying, it starts right there. We get a forced pivot. We close on our high. Then we start, we immediately zoom the median lines and the march begins. See it? And anybody that was short at this point has only got one thing on their mind. Crap, I had to work hard to get my 50 pips and 20 of it just disappeared. Let me out. Then we stall which puts us in the nexus. I don't think we're going to stay in the nexus long, so I want in. I put my order in here. I'm willing to buy at the close of this bar. As this bar closes, I put my order in. Now take a look. 
I get filled. We open a tick higher, but we come lower. I get filled. I'm able to buy as much as I want. This is cash for an exchange. You can buy billions and billions and billions. Okay, I buy as much as I want, enough for the fund, and then it takes off. Because these are 20 minute bars. We test the median line and close off it a little. This is the ultimate entry right here. If I was trading a one lot, maybe a five lot, that is market geometry at its best. We're above everything, we come back, we swing down, we test this frequency line and this frequency line. And then we zoom the median line, we go vertical, and this game, for all intents and purposes, is over. It's just a matter of what's the final score. You follow me? Yeah, this is beautiful if you can see it. But remember, to see this, you've got to see the frequency to draw it. You've got to see this frequency, and then you've got to be prescient enough to copy it over here because this is the lowest close. This helps you frame the trade because we get one touch on it and never come back. Okay? Well, I gotta see what BJ said. Ah, this is why you do not cloud your mind with so much data. You keep in tune with the market and see the the subtle moves. This is not easy to learn when you're taught to use so much data. Yep. If I had twice as many bars on this chart, which is, let's think about that, probably 20% of what most of you have on your screen or 10% of what most of you have on your screen, if I had twice as many bars, let's watch. Let's, let's double the bars. Watch as I add more bars. It, let's go. Oh, sorry, I've got to take this bar out. Watch as I add more bars. It gets less and less clear. It becomes more and more a part of the mess. You see it? It's no longer that exciting. It's no longer that easy to pick out. But when I zoom right in, what's going on here? It's obvious to see what's going on here. And the, when we zoom right here, what do you expect? One second, Jose. As we zoom this, what do you expect? We expect a retest. So if you're not in, put your hands out. See it? If we zoom it, expect the retest. Put your order in. Maybe put it a couple pips ahead of it. It's fine. But expect a retest. And you're going to get a retest of this frequency line and this frequency line so we've got a little nexus energy point here put your hands out if you're not if you're not capable of seeing this now we zoom through you should expect this is simple this is Andrews 101 price is going to come back and retest boom you didn't have to take the aggressive entry you could have used Andrews simple techniques gotten in here and caught all the move, right? Rebecca's exactly right. So we've gone vertical, gone vertical. We zoomed the upper parallel, median line, whatever the, yeah, median line, sorry. 
we have not retested it that's a sign of sign of strength so am I in a hurry to take profits no it's gone vertical it hasn't retested anything I'm gonna hold as my dad would say I'm gonna hold my water now we've zoomed the upper parallel I do expect what a retest okay I get it now we've had a retest why haven't I drawn a box the last two bars before the breakout show a lot of pressure are those two bars important in your decision these two bars are define the nexus Jose yeah we're still looking for a top so I can't draw anything. I either have to take my profit at 110.10 one ten, ten, or I, I have to actually believe that price will form a box and give me an opportunity. Okay? If you want, you can go to break even now, but that's about all you can do. Okay, after our retest, we're sprinting again. Do I have to be in a hurry to mark anything we're still looking for a high we're still looking for a high we're still looking for a high can you see this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen new highs I know it's a lot, but an object in motion tends to stay in motion. I'm in no hurry. Okay, now we get mirror bars. Slight pullback. Smaller range bars. Another set of mirror bars. Closes on its high higher high and higher high for the move take a look bingo didn't I just make a box there's my warning line um, I think I'm missing a line here but you can do this double tops now maybe you want to draw this line in or maybe you want this to be the bottom and you don't want to move until the warning line is taken out that's fine too watch so maybe your stop actually comes in here when we take out and close we zoom the warning line now we are zoom the warning line what do we expect retest okay there's my retest new top okay good now I've got a top if I have a, te a top what can I have what can I look for yeah bottom where's the bottom gonna come in there's a move below the warning line but we close on our high that looks an awful lot like it's a forced pivot sure that's fine it's horizontal. we're going to use it horizontally but yeah so now we've got our box when we zoom through just move our stop We can't be too close to the action or we'll get stopped out. Now we go dead sideways. And 
we're still in my three pips. And when this bar forms, look at the size of the tail, but we still close them back above the warning line, or sorry, our box. And we work our way higher. So we mark it as a significant bottom. Come back down to retest and get rejected again. Now we take out, now we made new highs. That makes this an important pivot. We put on an advanced multi pivot line. Like I said, I didn't take the median line, I'll just leave it. We've got highs in. Now we need the low. We come down, make a low, close in the upper third, and next bar closes on its high. I'm going to mark this as significant, put out an advanced multi pivot line. Here's our box. This is where I decided that this was the bottom and I drew an ML3. And remember, I'm not looking to get long. This was within four or five. What am I trying to do? Not well boxing, yes, but what else? What else? Man, well, I'm trying to find a tool to help me manage. What would that be? Refresh. I'm trying to refresh frequency and or look for a target. Exactly right, Matthew. Okay. I draw a median line. Now we're at the median line. So this has good frequency. With 80% probability, we should make the median line. We do. Andrews 101. Now we pull down. Now note, I've got an upsloping line. And the reason why is that you can do it straight across. You just say it's not closing above it. But just from my eyes, I mean, as I'm looking at it, I'm using this, this band of lows as my blue lines. They were resistance, now they're support. And I'm using this upside which seems to have some upward slope to it as my box. It doesn't have to be horizontal. And that, I mean, that's the second warning line in blue right there in front of you. <coughs> and we're testing it. We just haven't blown through it. Now we get above, we zoom through the second warning line you see that we traded outside the lower parallel, traded back in. That's a sign of strength. You know, if you're hell bent on it, go ahead and put in a sliding parallel here. I don't care. It's not worth my time. Again, we've closed above my slanted line. We've closed above the lower parallel. We've closed above the warning line two for the first time. At this point, when I follow through, I can move my stop up again. Do you see me boxing it in? Notice I marked this touch of the, me of the media line as one. We touched the media line. Then we slid from the media line to the outer parallel. We see that a lot. We, over, we overshot, but we do see that a lot. Now we get some wide range bars, and we're closing down our high. And we do get a bar that gets to the median line. And look at the close, though. It's almost like the median line is the trend barrier. Or, for those of you that travel on the subway, the third rail. So I mark it with a 2 because of the way price was rejected. So I've got one touch up there. I've got two touches up there. I also put out an advanced multi-pivot line. So now I've got the top of a box. Come down. You can mark it here. You can mark it here. You can certainly mark it here. Open near the low. Close on our high. But now we've got a narrow box. 
And as I get closer and closer to my profit target, I'll get more aggressive. I've got a narrow box. When we break through it, and we're at warning line three, I'll put a profit stop in. And now, watch the next bar. If you're several steps ahead of the market, you're thinking about one touch on the median line, two touches on the median line, three drives to the top on the median line. If it gets up here, I'm going to take my money because I don't know what the upside potential is and what the downside potential is. But I do know that that's the third time up here and the last two times it was rejected hard. So I should have an order up here at the median line. Follow me? And that's a lot of money. I do not have an order in at the median line. I do have my, this is a mistake on my part, I do have a profit stop in and in one bar I watch it go to the median line go oh shit and before I can even pick up the graybeard phone we're here and heading lower and I tell, I say to him I just wanted to make sure you're working my stop. What am I supposed to say to them? They stop me out. And that's the story of that tune, basically. That was the opportunity, set of opportunities, okay? Did it make more sense this time around? So we'll look at trades, but more importantly, we'll look at what the bars mean. It's not even just the repetition. We're now going to actually open them up and go inside. What does it mean? Why does it mean it? You don't always have to agree with me, and we can have a dialogue, but I'll tell you what I'm thinking, excuse me, about each bar, about each area. So that's where, that's just the beginning of where breakfast is going for the next 6 to 12 months, okay? So for those of you that are getting bored, which is, it's hard for me to believe that people are getting bored, but if, if you want to know where we're going... We're going here and beyond. Now, I will be gone taking care of family business. I'm assuming it's just going to be next week, okay? For this next week, I want you to practice the things that you make money doing. At, at least all next week, yep. There is no chance that I will be here next week. I have an open-ended flight with an option to fly back, not this weekend, but the following weekend. I can exercise it or not. just depends on if I get finished. While I'm gone, stay for the Green Chicago Festival. Yeah, no, I've, I've seen it enough, thanks. Um, while I'm gone, work on the things that make you money, okay? I don't, I have to tell you, I don't think I'll have a great time, but I appreciate the thoughts. Um, I'm the little brother putting the hammer down on my bigger brothers and my older sisters. But I'm the patriarch now, for whatever, for whatever reason, good or bad. Question, there are no PM sessions, are there, since the site is being worked on? Just making sure. What what PM sessions? What do you mean? You mean eating with the master? 
Or you mean you mean midday? Next week? Yeah, Shane will be doing them. <coughs> there are Rebecca. Did you not get a quote? Did you not get a link? Can you can you get into the website, Rebecca? Okay, Rebecca, drop me an email right now, please. And I'll forward it to Ed. And anybody that can't get in, try and open a uh, support ticket. I, As I understand from somebody here, the support might be... I see Ed answering support, so I don't know. Um, I tried to go to the link for support on the new site, No Luck, last night. Can I send a question to the best of your knowledge? Uh, just send it to me. And I'll forward it to Ed. And I'll tell him, hey, I'm going to send you a few because it looks like something's wrong with support. Okay? They're doing a bunch of things at once today. Ed is up and doing things right now. Okay? It's hard to be the youngest, yeah, leading the older siblings. Yeah, I know. But i got to do what my mother wants. So... I'm, I'm going to go pack, actually. I have to see Dr. Gary right now. I have CrossFit this afternoon, but I'm going to cancel it because I've got too much packing to do. So. <laughs> got it. All right, guys. Have a wonderful... I, I may be here on the Friday session. Oh, I have to be here on the Friday session. We have to finish the natural gas explanation. Um, so I'll be here for that, and that'll be about it. You guys take care. I will see you tomorrow midday. Oh, BG said, please tell Dr. Yeah, don't worry about it. He's all good. He knew what was going on. See you in a little while. I will do my best to travel safe. Thank you. Everybody take care.